हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ आवर न्यू ऑनलाइन लेक्चर फॉर द कोर्स टाइटल प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर फ्रूट एंड प्लांटेशन क्रॉप्स फ्रूट्स एंड प्लांटेशन क्रॉप्स फॉर द कोर्स नंबर हॉर्ट टू फोर थ्री सो टूडेज ऑनलाइन टॉपिक इज स्पेशल हॉर्टिकल्चरल प्रैक्टिसेस नाउ द स्पेशल हॉर्टिकल्चरल प्रैक्टिस अंडर स्पेशल हॉर्टिकल्चरल प्रैक्टिसेस देर आर मच मोर प्रैक्टिसेज दैट आर टू बी फॉलोड for improving the yield and quality and getting regular yields from the fruit crops the first one is bahar treatment then bending in guavas then uh, notching in fig girdling in grapes ringing in mangoes and these are the special horticultural practices that are adopted in various fruit crops so let us start with our first special horticultural practices that means bahar treatment so let us see the definition of this bahar treatment bahar treatment is a special horticultural practice followed in fruit cultivation and is and is the withholding of water 1 to 1 and 1/2 months prior to flowering prior to flowering with a view to give rest to the trees by following practices like soil working manuring and resumption of irrigation at the proper time so here the definition of bahar treatment is given now bahar treatment is a special horticultural practice followed in fruit cultivation and and is the withholding of water 1 to 1 and 1/2 months prior to flowering with a view to get rest to the trees by following practices like soil working manuring and resumption of irrigation at proper time here you can see there are pictures are displayed here in this slide Zero, one, two, three, four. Now, if this is a pomegranate crops, and you can see here how the bahar treatment is done in this crop, where the water is withhold for two one and one and a half months before flowering, and then after one and a half months, the flower watering is restarted, followed by soil working, manuring, and irrigation at proper time, so that this will enhance the flowering. Let us move on to the next slide regarding bahar treatment. what is the principle underlined in the bahar treatment that is accumulation of carbohydrates in the plant body by giving rest to the tree or checking its growth results in profuse differentiation of buds flowers and fruiting in the subsequent season now this is the main principle that is underlined in the bahar treatment accumulation of carbohydrates in the plant body by giving rest to the tree that means by withholding water we are giving rest to the tree so there is accumulation of carbohydrates in the plant body by checking its growth which results in the profuse differentiation of buds flowers and fruiting in the subsequent season so as we withhold the water for one and a half months the accumulation of carbohydrates starts in the plant body due to this which results in the flower bud differentiation resulting in profuse flowering and fruiting in the subsequent season let us move on to the next slide what is the need of bahar treatment under our conditions that means under indian conditions that is under tropical and subtropical conditions deciduous trees show indiscriminate growth resulting in bearing of flowers and fruits throughout the year this causes problems of poor quality and economic yields as also those of marketing of fruits the growth of such trees is regulated by giving bahar treatment so that trees flowers and fruit properly in one season now under the indian conditions now under indian conditions that means under tropical and subtropical conditions the deciduous trees especially in deciduous trees like pomegranate oranges and mandarins show indiscriminate growth which results in bearing of flowers and fruits throughout the year due to these above tropical and subtropical conditions the deciduous fruit crops give out flowers and fruits throughout the year so this causes the problems of poor quality and economic yields and as also those of marketing fruits that means we receive the fruits though throughout the year their quality is very poor and they are and we receive an economic yields that means the yields which are not economically uh economically 
uh, good yields for the farmers and also the fruits that we receive receive are of not good marketable quality the growth of such trees is regulated by giving bahar treatment now in such conditions this practice of bahar treatment is followed so that the trees flowers and fruit properly in one season and give out the fruits of marketing quality now what is the procedure that is followed in bahar treatment in bahar treatment first water in the form uh, in the in the form irrigation to the fruit trees is withhold about 1 to 1 and 1/2 months prior to blooming season in the blooming season the period however varies with type of fruit trees soil type etc the stress should be limited only to produce temporary wilting symptoms leading to withering of leaves more stress may prove fatal to fruit trees after a month after about a month the soil around the fruit trees is worked within a radius of of up to 2 and 2 to 2 and 1/2 feet dead decaying roots are pruned taking care not to cause heavy root pruning as it may devitalize the plants now this is the procedure first of all followed before that we saw the definition its necessity and the principle underlying meaning the bahar treatment now we are seeing the procedure in bahar treatment first water in the form of irrigation to the fruit trees is withheld about 2 to about 1 to 1 and 1/2 months prior to the blooming that means flowering season the period however I mean, this means withholding water withholding withholding period may however vary with the type of the fruit type fruit tree type soil type and etc the stress should be limited that means not severe stress is to be given it should be limited only to produce temporary wilting symptoms leading to withering of leaves that means the stress of water that is to be given to the fruit trees should produce temporary wilting symptoms leading to the withering of leaves severe stress is not to be given more stress may prove fatal to the fruit trees that means and more stress of water is given to the fruit crops that may prove vital and the tree may die out after about a month the soil around the fruit trees that means after giving stress the soil around the fruit trees is worked within the radius of up to 2 and 1/2 feet 2 and 1/2 feet 2 to 2 and 1/2 feet dead decaying roots are pruned taking care not to cause heavy root pruning as it may devitalize devitalize means the tree may die out the plant dry out the leaves turn yellow and wither showing showing symptoms of temporary wilting indicating that the tree had has had enough rest the exposed roots are covered with soil and recommended dose of manures and fertilizers are applied to the trees the trees are immediately given a light irrigation followed by another light irrigation after 4 to 6 days heavy irrigations are avoided initially as it may lead to excessive vegetative growth after about 10 days the trees are irrigated copiously the trees burst into flowering within 2 to 3 weeks from the first irrigation now this is the procedure that is followed step by step by after giving the bahar treatment as soon as the leaves turn yellow and show the symptoms of withering a temporary wilting and all those they indicate that the tree has received enough rest now the whatever the roots we have exposed during the bahar treatment those are to be covered with the soil and also the recommended doses of fertilizers and manures are to be applied to the trees within the recommended radius now the trees are immediately given a light irrigation not a heavy one a light irrigation is to be given to the trees and subsequently another light irrigation also is to be given after the first irrigation that is after 4 to 6 days of the first irrigation and avoid heavy irrigations initially as it may lead to the excessive vegetative growths we are doing this bahar treatment or following this bahar treatment to receive profuse flowering and fruiting so if we give heavy irrigations in the initial stages it may lead to excessive growth rather than reproductive growth after about 10 days the trees are irrigated copiously the trees burst into flowering within 2 to 3 weeks from the first irrigation that means after applying the first irrigation the tree starts flowering to from 2 to 3 weeks after first irrigation now choice of the bahar treatment that means which bahar has to be chosen by the farmer or the fruit producer selection of the bahar for the fruit crops depends upon 
availability of water market assurance that means requirement of market quality fruits incidence of pests and diseases now these are the criteria as while selecting the bahar availability of water that means the period of bahar is selected taking into consideration the availability of assured irrigation during a particular period of the year that means whatever the quantity of water is available during the particular period of the year that is to be taking into consideration that period that is availability of assured irrigation water during a particular period of the year taking this period into consideration we have to select the bahar that means which bahar we have to select that is ambe bahar umrug bahar or hast bahar market assured market demand for the fruits during the period of the year that means when the when there is a huge demand in the market for the fruits that we receive after the bahar treatment that should be also taken into consideration incidence of pest and diseases the period of bahar is selected which there will be minimum incidence of pest and diseases that means the period when we receive the huge fruits from this bahar they should not be coincide with the incidence of pest and diseases that means there should be minimum incidence of this pest and diseases during the period of fruiting that we receive after the bahar treatment and this is all for the bahar treatment the special the first special horticulture practice let us move on to the next special so here the bars are defined here that is ambe bahar in the next slide murug bahar and hast bahar ambe bahar that is withholding of water in december and flowering january february fruit mature in june august that means the ambe bahar means the flowering of the fruit trees which takes place during january february this bahar is known as ambe bahar for selecting this bahar with a which we have to withhold the water in during december so that we will receive the fruits or the fruits of this ambe bahar will mature during june to august the second bahar is murug bahar the flowering of this murug bahar takes place during june to july so for receiving the fruits of this murug bahar we have to withhold the water during the april may months so that we will receive the fruits mature fruits of this murug bahar during november december now the last bahar third one is the hast bahar the flowering of this bahar takes place during the months of september october so so withhold so for selecting this bahar we have to we have to withhold the water during the months of july to august and uh, after receiving the fruits of this flower uh, the fruits of this bahar we receive the fruits of this flower uh, bahar we start receiving the matured fruits of this bahar during april and may now in this slide we have seen the flowering period of the bahar the name of the bahar when we have to withhold the water and when we will we will receive the mature fruits of the bahar so let us move on to the next slide next slide we can see here the new horticultural practices that is the bending in goa this is also one of the special horticultural practices that was earlier followed in the wild varieties of the guava so in recent years this practice is not followed so what is what is the definition and principle of bending in guava we will see here and what is the procedure the specific procedure of bending downwards the erect growing branches of guava horizontal to the ground with the objective of reducing the dominance of oxygen polarity is called as bending now it is a procedure of bending downwards the erect growing branches of guava especially in guava this practice is followed where the varieties which produce the erect growing branches they are bent downwards horizontally to the ground with an object of reducing the dominance of oxygen's polarity and this procedure is referred as bending so with an object of reducing the dominance of the oxygen polarity to reduce the dominance of oxygen polarity in the apical region of the erect growing branches the practice of bending the branches is downward is followed which is referred as bending what is the principle to bring all the buds at the same level in order to increase the fruit bearing area by breaking the apical dominance this is the major principle underlining the bending of branches in guava to bring all the buds at the same level when the branches are bent horizontally we bring artificially all the buds at the same level in order to increase the fruit bearing area as 
the birds come at the same level they start bearing flowers and they bear fruits so the fruiting area is considerably increased by breaking the apical dominions as we bend the branches downward so here you can see in the slides various pictures are displayed here representing or depicting the procedure of bending you can see here where the flower buds are then their leaf exile current season growth and past season growth so the flower buds are there in the current season growth not only not on the past season growth that means flower buds are produced in the new growth flower buds in the exile of leaf current season growth and mature wood or past season growth whatever the new growth we receive on the past season growth flowering takes place you can see here an orchard in the below picture where the branches of the goa varieties are right upwards that means erect growing branches and in the next slide you can see the erect growing branches are bent downward to the ground by tying the stone with a string the tip of the branches and in the last photo in the slide you can see there is profuse fruiting on the bent branches that were bent downward to the ground apical dominance the terminal buds of the trees synthesize oxygen which controls cell elongation and plant growth the oxygen thus produced move downwards and are generally accumulated on the opposite side to direction of light causing rapid growth towards the direction of light when the branch of the tree is erect oxygen synthesized by the terminal buds come down by gravity and accumulate on the lower side of the shoots as a result the buds situated only on the upper side sprout while most of the buds located on the lower side of the shoot are suppressed by the oxygen actions and remain dormant this behavior of apical apical buds to dominate the lower bud lower buds is called apical dominance is called apical dominance now what is apical dominance that is a major problem why we have to bend the branches downwards in guava though this practice is not followed in the new guava variety that is l49 or sardar variety because the branches of this uh, sardar variety are naturally uh, horizontal they grow horizontal or they are bend downward to the ground the terminal buds of the tree synthesize oxygen which control cell elongation in and plant growth now there there are the oxygen which are produced in the synthesized means produced or developed in the terminal buds they control the cell elongation and plant growth processes the oxygen thus produced move downwards and are generally accumulated on the opposite side to the direction of the light causing rapid growth towards the direction of the light now as the oxygen that are produced in the terminal buds they move downwards due to gravity and generally get accumulated on the opposite side to the direction of the light causing rapid growth towards the direction of the light these uh, that means upward growth when the branches of the tree is erect as the branches of the tree grow erect in erect growing varieties the oxygen the synthesized at the ter- by the terminal buds come down naturally due to gravity and accumulate on the lower side of the shoots not on the upper side and as a re- what happens due to the as a result the buds situated only on upper side of the branches sprout while most of the buds located on the lower side of the uh, shoot are suppressed by the action of the oxygen and they remain dormant that means they remain as such without sprouting and this behavior of the apical buds to dominate the lower lower buds due to the oxygen that are produced in the apical buds that is known as apical dominance and due to this reason the apa the lower buds remain dormant without sprouting only the apical buds are sprouted and we receive flowering and fruiting from the apical buds as such that the lower buds remain dormant and to overcome this uh, re- uh, problem the branches of the erect growing varieties of guava are bent horizontally by tying stone and string to the tip of the branches so this is all for today we will stop here and in the next online lecture the bending 
will see here also the procedure of bending i was to stop the lecture but one more slide is there regarding the procedure of bending in bending the erect growing branches are bent downwards by making them horizontal downward making them horizontal to the ground the branches are kept in position by tying them with ropes the ropes are kept in fixed position with the help of weights like big stones or big tying or by tying them with stumps fixed deep in the ground the branches are kept in this position for one season till they are permanently trained in the horizontal direction varieties like sardar because of their horizontal growing character do not require bending now the bending procedure you can see in the adjoining figure a uh, picture is displayed here where the branches are growing right above erect tall and in the adjoining picture you can see the tall growing branches are tied with strings or uh, ropes and they are uh, tied with big stones heavy stones and they are bent downward to the ground in bending erect growing branches are bent downwards by making them horizontal to the ground now the branches are kept in position by tying them with ropes to hold the with hold the branches in the horizontal position they are tied with ropes the ropes are kept fixed in the fixed position with the help of the weights or like big stones or by tying them these ropes to the stumps fixed deep in the ground fixed deep in the ground first of all the stumps are fixed deep in the ground and then the ropes are tied to the tip of the branches and then they are tied to the deep fixed stumps the branches are kept as such in this horizontal position for one season till they are permanently trained for growing in this horizontal direction now there are some varieties like sardar they possess the naturally horizontal growing character so they do not require this bending operation they do not require this bending technique special horticultural technique as their as their branches naturally grow horizontal and they have profuse flowering and fruiting now we will stop here and in the next online lecture we'll see about the next special horticultural practice that is notching in fig so we'll st uh, stop here today this is all for today thank you students